Bismillah. So in the previous video, we talked about the importance of self-concept and how it was influenced by important people. Now, there are also components of self-concept, namely the real self and the ideal self. Now, the real self refers to one's actual perception of characteristics, traits and abilities. So it is, for example, your real self is a person who has you know, this kind of characteristic, you are punctual, you are hardworking, and then your trait, okay, is also, uh, you know, hardworking, you are honest, and you have abilities as well, like, you are good at drawing, you are good at mathematics, right? So, this is your real self, okay? Now, your ideal self, on the other hand, is the perception of what one should or would like to be. So, your real self is your actual self how you view yourself at the current moment, your ideal self is the self that you want to become. Okay, let's say for example, there is a real Shamsuddin, okay, uh, who is at the at the moment, uh, contohnya for example, reading the Quran, uh, not so smooth. Okay, I accept that as my real self. But my, my ideal self is I want to become a person who is able to read the Quran smoothly. Uh, okay, so that's an example lah, of the difference between the real self and the ideal self. Now, so this is also, uh, you know, uh, you know, the interaction between the ideal self and the real self. Now, if the ideal self, most of the ideal self is overlapping with the real self. So, there's a big room here that overlaps. Maksudnya, sama lah. So, most of your ideal self is what you are already. Okay, what you want to become is, contohnya macam, you know, 60% uh, of what you are already. That means you are able to do it already. So, in this case, we call this as congruence. Ataupun, there's a match or harmony. Okay, so you feel in tune with yourself. Okay, what you want to become is uh, mostly who you are right now. Okay, now on the other hand, some people, they experience this. Their ideal self, okay, only a very small portion of it is actually the real self. Uh, okay, that means kita nak jadi orang yang macam ni. Okay, mungkin okay, uh, banyak hafal Quran ke... So that on time ke, you you be, be have many friends ke, very friendly person ke. But you know that your real self is mostly is not that. But you want to become like that. But there's little overlapping. Banyak benda yang bukan lagi. Right? So this is what we call incongruence or mismatch which creates anxiety. Uh, okay? So this may be a source of anxiety as well. When you know that there are so much things that you want to become. But you know now that you are like macam... Near, not even 5% of what you want to become, contohnya. So, that may cause a certain anxiety there lah. Alright, so, so this is how it is explained uh, between the ideal self and the real self. So, our goal is basically to identify what is our real self and be honest about it. Okay, and what is our re ideal self and don't be too ambitious about it. Okay, and so that and then we try to identify, okay, whether the overlap is huge or not. If the overlap, overlapping is not so huge, right? So then, you know, make effort so that the overlapping becomes larger so that, you know, you become a harmonious person to, 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 to give the effect of harmony, okay? And to reduce anxiety in particular, right? So that is the difference and relationship between the real self and the ideal self. Now, there's also several concepts that may increase the chances of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, getting your real self into your ideal self, uh, which is positive regard. Or PR, yeah? uh, PR refers to warmth, affection, love, respect that comes from important people in one's life. PR is crucial to one's ability to handle stress or the anxiety just now, can and if, uh, achieve self actualization. You can also translate self actualization as the overlapping area between the ideal self and the real self. Okay, so the larger it becomes, the higher the chances of you achieving self-actualization. And in this slide here, explains that PR is important. Okay, positive regard, okay, that means warm, affection, support basically, eh, and respect from important people is very much needed, okay, for you to achieve, okay, and to help you achieve. Imagine if you, you know, people around you are very supportive of you uh, to, so that you can, you can, they can help you to become, uh, you know, getting nearer to your ideal self. Uh, for PR, there are two particular types, unconditional PR and conditional PR. Unconditional PR is basically unconditional, lah, that means tidak bersyarat. PR given without condition or strings attached. Okay, like for example, love that is without boundaries, love without 
uh, nak katanya uh, apa conditions lah okay unconditional love for example like macam your parents okay usually they should provide unconditional PR no matter how many mistakes you have done to them they still love you they still care for you kan okay so that's an indication that they are giving unconditional PR On the other hand, there's also conditional PR. That means there is bersyarat lah, there is strings attached. PR given only when the person is doing what the provider expect. Okay, for example, uh, this can also be coming from parents as well. Sometimes parents, okay, not so good parents, they only love their children if they obey them. So, obeying them is the condition. Ah, okay, so if they don't obey them, okay, terus buang anak. I will not love you anymore because you don't even follow my order. So this is conditional PR. This is not that healthy. Okay, so I hope that you know in future, uh, you know when you become parents or what kind, try to have you know a more. Po It's not wrong to do conditional PR sometimes, but have more portion of unconditional PR. Why? Because okay. Uh, so this is an example lah kan, unconditional PR, I love you no matter what and then conditional PR, I keep loving you so long as you obey me, just like what I said just now. Uh, why you want to have a higher portion of unconditional PR is because based on research, giving unconditional PR may increase the chances of a person developing self-actualization. Basically, meaning to say that unconditional PR is something that you want to give okay, and you also want to receive because why? It increases the chances of the ideal self and the real self to overlap and therefore achieving self-actualization which is the goal here. So this is the humanistic perspective of looking at personality.